Hello ladies and gentlemen, Willie here. Yep, more TBC content, more classic stuff coming soon, have a bunch planned. This is just quite the hot topic at the moment and well worth addressing sooner rather than later. I want to talk about my concerns with faction balance going into the Burning Crusade, expected impacts it may have on the game's population, as well as possible remediation of these new developments. And I wasn't going to be making some of the points here until way way later in Classic's life cycle, but they fit in for the purposes of what I'll be talking about, so here here they are. As seen with my recent look into how well Blood Elf and Drain Eye shape up versus their counterpart faction races, there's a pretty large edge towards the Horde, not only in regards with the new race class combos, but just in general for everyone. Blood Elf Paladins have always been a very popular choice. Even on retail these days, you can bet it's going to attract more people to the Horde than new players to Alliance for Shaman, and I'm basing this upon the number of people who opt into that race class combo in retail here of course, but I still think it's a pretty safe bet. Private servers have aimed to address this imbalance before. Recently, a server released with Alliance players gaining 25% extra reputation from kills, 10% extra from other sources, 50% extra honor, all quest items shared, free 60% and 100% riding skill, which was the more expensive part of learning your riding come TBC, and seal of blood on Alliance, which led to about a 56% Alliance population before a few of those bonuses were offered to Horde. Now it's 53% Horde part. Saying this, private server players will always be more inclined to mid-max than your average player. And saying faction balance isn't that much of a difference, whilst actually is true for some classes, is just overall naive. People, whatever you think, care about performance, competition, and making an informed decision these days far more so than in the past. And that's before I even mentioned PvP, which I didn't really get into before now. Will of the Forsaken not sharing a cooldown with a PvP trinket is just a joke. I don't know how this wasn't nerfed until Wrath of the Lich King. The only thing keeping some semblance of balance with that racial was the fact that trinkets didn't remove all CC until midway through TBC. And now for the daily reminder that Arcane Torrent is completely broken. You know the deal by now how I feel about this. Two second AoE silence, not on diminishing returns. I, I mean, I just don't know how it exists. And faction balance doesn't matter anymore for PvP as much, since Arena is cross-faction. I would expect battleground queues to only get worse than they are currently in Classic for the Horde side though. But these are all things that we know about now. We know Horde will have a jump in population if we roll out TBC as Blizzard intended it. But moving on, what will PvP servers look like? Now, currently I play on a PvP server in Classic, which I'm fine with. Not the biggest fan of world PvP, but it doesn't bother me enough to want to transfer because honestly I'm not really out in the open world enough for it to do so, so I'm sticking with it at least for the time being. What do we get in TBC? Daily quests, repeatable content that needs you to go out into the open world. Now I want to talk about statistics for a moment here, well maybe more than a moment, especially regarding server populations, and for this our best friend is ironforge.pro. I reference this site all of the time because it's the best indicator we have. It pulls data from Warcraft logs and to appear on Warcraft logs you don't have to opt in or anything. If someone logs whilst you're in a group you will appear on there. It could be in a level 20 dungeon, it could be in a molten core pug, it doesn't matter. This means the numbers on here aren't in any way representative of the population as a whole but mostly of the volume of players who are actively taking part in end game content. So I just needed to make that clear. And as you can see we have a few unicorn 50-50 servers and I find it super funny that Fairlina, the dedicated streamer server, ended up being so balanced when so many people were mad at streamers early on in Classic. But overall, well you can see for yourself, lots of servers which edge on a horde advantage, 52, 53, up to 55% horde population, and then you have the one-sided servers where things just collapse like Lucifron or Scram. And let me tell you something, 55% population on one side is not okay, it's not a small advantage, it's massive. In fact, 53% is even pretty bad. We aren't looking at small numbers here. Top servers have about 10,000 people alone appearing from Warcraft logs. There could easily be the same amount of number of guys still leveling, messing about, or just who haven't logged in recently or do much endgame content. Why do I think 53% is bad? Ever played League of Legends? If a champion ever reached 55% win rate, it was insanely broken and would be perma banned into infinity before finally getting toned down. And even looking at tiers, now top champions in terms of win rate barely break 53% and with League of Legends we get a full picture of volumes of games played which are of course 
larger than World of Warcraft's player base. And it's true that larger numbers means the skew and percentage means more overall, but even at World of Warcraft's estimated populations, I don't think we're too far off this holding true. Some of the most broken releases ever on League of Legends barely hit 56 to 57 percent win rate, and if anything ever got above 60 percent, well, it would essentially be unplayable in any game mode that had a ban system. So when we set this up next to our current populations, it's worse than it looks, a lot worse, and I don't see improvement coming anytime soon. And saying this, I'm looking forward to the comments of, oh, but my mate Barry farmed Elemental Fire in Searing Gorge for two hours yesterday, didn't see a single horde, mate. Great point. Anyway, back to the dailies after that small segue. They are in the open world, there will be more horde, put two and two together. As an alliance player, well, I hope you wake up early in the morning, because at any form of peak time, everywhere will be packed out with Horde. And you may say, well then, you don't get to compete for resources and your dailies will take so much longer on PvE. The thing is, as alliance, I don't think I'll have any competition at all on PvP servers, because I'll be too busy waiting on my resurrect timer. This is one of the biggest turnoffs for me remaining on a PvP server in TBC. Daily zones incentivize taking out the opposing faction so that you can progress a little bit faster. It will be extremely active world PvP, which is great for some players, and I think I'd even enjoy it at the start. But sort of like South Shore versus Taran Mill, well, the charm wears off pretty fast once one side starts outnumbering you consistently. Imagine every time you pop over to Neverwing Shelf, you already see 10 red bars below you doing the daily. Start up your own group, you say. Sure, it's possible. You might even outnumber for a time, but doing that for weeks in a row? Eh, nah, no thanks. So what do we do about this conundrum? Well, no changes at this point seems to have gone from the prevailing movement to a bit of a meme, and unless you're living under a rock, it's not really used unironically anymore. Moving into TBC, we need serious consideration from both the players and Blizzard as for balance measures to bridge the faction gap, which is only about to get a whole lot wider. And at some point, there is keeping an expansion in the spirit of how it was. In others, there's rebalancing a game for its modern, goal-driven, considerably higher population servers. Remember Blizzard trying to nerf AV pre-maids by removing battleground numbers, taking away the exit portals from Warsun Gulch due to people getting mind-controlled out? How about stopping ZG enchants being placed on items then traded to different classes? All of these were in vanilla, but not in classic. And that's without considering the likes of layering, and I can only hope that if you blame this on the players, not the exploitability of the game, that you're using a CRT monitor because that's how it was back in the day as well. I think the real key area to target is the racial bonuses. Horde currently have the upper hand in PvE and PvP. Now it wasn't until Wrath the Lich King and every man for himself when the Alliance finally got their big boost in PvP. And were this a Wrath the Lich King video, I would also call that racial broken beyond belief because it was. But for the time being, here we are and here are the areas which I think need consideration. Both factions get the new seals, changed to the Wrath the Lich King name to fit the law. Arcane Torrent toned down in some fashion. It does too much at the moment. Longer cooldown, interrupt instead of a silence, no primary resource, just something. Maybe Fear Ward should remain Alliance specific. It was given to the Horde in 2.3. Will of the Forsaken should have a 30 or 45 second shared cooldown with the PvP trinket. Once trinkets remove all CC effects. Gift of the Naru is quite weak overall. I think its cast time could be removed. I think Troll and Torrent have their defined strengths and are fine as they are. Orc get a bit too much as Blood Fury now gives bonus damage and healing on top of the already good amount of attack power. On top of them having free expertise, command and hardiness, they are the only race to have purely combat focused racials where none of them are bad. Well, Axe specialization is useless for casters and hunters, but still. Even if you did the previous changes, everybody would just go Orc instead. What do you do about this? I'm not sure, to be honest. Any of the two racials they currently have combined with some non-combat stuff would be borderline okay. It's just having all of it at once is a bit much. You'll have to let me know what you think here. And I have heard people talk about faction specific cues. I don't like this. I'm not a fan of punitive measures being put in place. The goal shouldn't be to stop Horde playing the game, but to make more people want to stick or play Alliance. Overall, it's a tough position to be in, because many of the changes that have taken place in Classic have been to accommodate the larger player base and in some ways encouraging more people to play Alliance would be doing this as well in TBC. But as it currently stands, many of the items I've mentioned and that other people are considering are directly looking at changing certain bonuses that various races gain, which is far closer to many people being in favour of a straight change than I ever thought we would see. You do have to take the good with the bad, of course. We aren't trying to change how classes play. We know Rogue Mage are insane in PvP, Lock Hunter are PvE gods. We don't want the classes to change per se, just the 
actual incentivization behind the reason you pick the race you do. So that's what I'm thinking at the moment. We're still quite a ways off TBC, but that's why now is the right time to be talking about it. As always, I do hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. If you like what you see, give the video a like and subscribe as there's plenty more to come. As always, thank you all so much for watching. Take care. Bye.